So today is a very exciting day because it's too much. Like, it's just too much. You can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, it's too much right now. I can't even evaluate that at this moment. It's like, no. Will's gonna enjoy this. You're gonna enjoy this. The world's gonna enjoy this. Oof. Oh. I mean, there's a reason why I couldn't put this phone down last year. There's a reason why. And the reason is the last generation of the Z Fold, the Z Fold 3, was in my pocket this past year more than any other phone. It was hard to put down. It's really two devices in one, a phone and a tablet that's in your pocket at all times. Because it's an emerging technology and you have a folding display, there is a bit of a compromise being made in the sense that you're carrying around something that is still a little bit bigger. You may have questions about the durability, things like this. We're on the fourth generation now. This is the Z Fold 4. We've also got the Z Flip 4 here every single generation has shown improvements in the categories that you might be nervous about previous generation i really didn't baby it all that much and the only case i had on it crazy slim later case which by the way we will of course be launching as well for these new models z fold 4 and z flip 4. let's figure it out and actually let's kick it off with this z fold 4 over here there's going to be a few different colors available we've actually got some of the options over here for you to take a look at so this one, gray green, whoa, getting right to it. Nothing fancy. I don't mind. Well, it's somewhere between gray and green, but I don't mind it. It's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I often go for the phantom black regardless. This one is subtle enough that you could have it every day and probably not get sick of it. Oof, okay. Because I spent so much time with the previous generation, I can immediately tell that some of the changes have taken place here in the hinge section. So on the old model, what you can see here in the center is that you have this metal frame which comes down equally on each side. We don't have that here. They've both been trimmed and more importantly, it's been trimmed on the front display. So you actually end up with a wider screen in that location. The camera section also seems to show a slight difference. Each individual camera unit is going to be a, a little bit larger in scale. The edges got a little bit flatter and less curved. Now you have this glossy edge around the outside. Oof. Oh, they're really figuring out this hinge design. More satisfying with each generation. This is coming from a person who has used extensively each generation. This is the beauty of iteration and improvement. On this side of the device, we have our fingerprint scanner slash power button, as well as our volume rocker, SIM tray up above there, USB type C on the bottom. This is going to have quick charge at 25 watts or above, you'll be able to recharge to 50% in around 30 minutes. Of course, 25 watt plus power adapter. On the front of the device, we have our front facing camera, symmetrical center location. On the inside, when we open it up, we have the off center front facing camera. Once again, a below display design. You can see the way that they've hidden it underneath. There's no doubt that as this technology improves, this thing becomes more invisible and they're able to make improvements on performance through the display. This should be the future. It's definitely less obstructive than having a large black hole there. Well, the beauty of a device like this is there's so many camera options and camera configurations. This external camera here. You can use your main camera units. You can use the internal camera on the big display. From a performance perspective, you have so many options anyways. Something else I'm noticing, check it out. The new taskbar on the bottom, very computer-like, which is kind of cool on the inside of such a large device. If I just want to you know, jump into, uh, I don't know, the camera app back to Chrome app or into messages, or maybe I want to jump into notes. It's all very fast and available. And because you have so much more real estate, it doesn't really bug you either. The other thing you can set up down here is app pairs. So if you want to launch multitasking with more than one app coming up at the same time. And the other cool thing is that this is dynamic. The frequently used apps are going to be in there. So you really don't have to do much work to set it up, sort of passively populating 
this frequently used section. They say that it is brighter on this model. It is a very bright display. The whole unit with the flatter edges just feels a little bit more substantial in your hands. If you really go in there and examine, you're going to be able to discover the fact that the display has a fold section in it. However, in my experience, this is a thing that you get over. I remember Gen 1, everyone was like, how are you even gonna use that? But particularly in more dimly lit environments, it just disappears. In daylight, you have a point. However, in daylight when I'm out, I'm a lot more likely to use the external display because I wanna do sort of one-handed functionality. Okay, let's check out this external display. It is absolutely wider and it is still great for one-handed use. It is one of my favorite things about using this device on a daily basis. You can easily with your thumb reach the entire keyboard. Maybe you're uh, talking, maybe you're carrying a drink, maybe you're walking, maybe you're in a public transit holding on to uh, one of those posts. You essentially end up with the functionality of actually a pretty small or portable smartphone because of how narrow the design is. It's not as narrow as it used to be, and you've got way less bezel here, so it actually has a more premium look to it. This is also the only foldable device that you can use a pen with. Okay, this was the gray-green color. There's also a moon beige. Now, these are early samples, so you can see this little coating on the bottom. Very satisfying. Confidence in the grip. As you can see, this flat edge compared to each one having a slightly rounded portion there. That's the three right there. The last color, which is probably the one I'd end up using, I tend to be boring, and because I'm gonna put a later case on it anyways, is the Phantom Black model, and we do have the later case all ready to go, and that just clips on like that, and then you get this more textured, more grippy. It's a big phone, so keeping it slim is kind of critical, and that's what happens with the later case. You can pre-order this right now via the link in the description of this video. Look at this. Okay, so from within the taskbar, we can still see all of our apps. We have gestures to go back in the browser or all the way back to the home page. You still have gestures in there. It's just changed ever so slightly and you end up with nav buttons in the bottom right corner and a dedicated multitasking button there as well. We're gonna dive into the camera, which is said to be improved on the new model, and we'll also watch some video and listen to the speakers. But first, obviously, I wanna show some respect to the Z Flip 4. The battery is a little bit bigger. It's up to 3,700 milliamp hours. And the thing that Samsung is emphasizing this time around is how versatile this device is for content creation because it stands up on its own and you can use the high quality rear cameras for all kinds of stuff because you have the external display you're seeing all types of people doing dances and yoga and you know what i'm saying like recording yourself is easier without any external equipment it's a kind of extra function that a lot of people might not think about okay so woo, that's a color on that one that, they must call that lavender or something like that what bora i might freak this is bora purple well, what's this then that's so close hmm that's a blue okay they're very they're kind of similar peel this one off I don't mind the Bora purple, obviously. This is more of a Kirk color, I think. Kirk's gonna try to pull that off, isn't he? In here, oh, look at that. Wow, I almost missed it. The other package was so slim. You do get a Type-C cable, a little bit of paperwork, and a SIM tool is in there as well. What efficient packaging going on. In 2022, everybody's trying to shrink the packaging down. Same design language carrying through onto this model. Flatter edges, fingerprint scanner, volume rocker, polished edges as well. USB type C cable, same quick charge, 25 watts or over, 50%, half an hour, 3,700 milliamp hour battery now. Both these devices, flagship chips. We're talking about Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is what you would want. Other side here, we have our SIM tray. This is what the experience feels like. Now, Mo, you used the Flip device for a little period of time there. It must be the most portable device that you ever used. In the cargo pants, like this is the wearable phone, if there was such a thing. When it's folded down, I feel the need here. This thing, it's barely there. Comparative to modern smartphones that have gotten enormous, I could go for a jog. There's something tempting about the extreme portability, probably not in Bora Purple for myself. Major hinge improvement here. Very satisfying. This is the three model. Not that it isn't satisfying. They definitely took things to a new level 
the perfect amount of resistance to provide the confidence. This is sort of what Samsung is showing off. You can just be recording in any scenario, kitchen table, cafe, coffee table, and you have endless abilities to sort of prop this thing up. When you're taking photos facing back in this direction or vlogging, I suppose, not only do you have something that's very comfortable to hold because it's narrow in this format, but you also have a display screen, which is gonna let you see what you're recording here. You're gonna wanna use these. That's gonna provide a much better image for front facing stuff, obviously. Now this one wins even more so for one-handed functionality. Oof, that's gotta be like the main benefit with this thing. It's so comfortable and so slim in one hand. It, it might be the one-handed smartphone champion or a purple Phantom black model, which would probably be my choice. We also have the brand new later case for this particular device. So you can see the way this just easily snaps on there, exposes what's necessary for that external display, as you can see there. Check it out, a little bit more texture to it, satisfying texture. This is your cover screen preview of what you're looking at. And obviously I can just quickly do this and now I'm recording via my nice camera on the front, which is actually the back, which is actually the front. It doesn't matter. I'm on the nice camera with a preview of, of what I'm recording. I have the device propped up. Think about how you might have to achieve that with a regular phone. This already has the ability to adjust the angle so well, like you would have in a tripod and with the improvement in the hinge, I mean, you can, sort of stop it anywhere along there. And you end up with a video, a front-facing video, which is beyond the capability of pretty much any other front-facing video. I'm recording via my nice camera on the front, which is actually the back. Preview of, of what I'm recording. Very well. I can see it being useful. People who own this phone will find ways to use it. And it might not be immediately evident. I don't know, recording your kid playing soccer or something and you're sitting at a picnic table, you just prop it up and you're recording the whole game or or for myself at the hockey rink or something like that. You don't have to hold it the whole time as long as you just have a flat surface. Pretty cool. Here we have pink gold. Let's add that in. It's really a two-tone effect because you're always having this black cutout section. The polished edge is ever so slightly different than the matte finish. Last up is just blue, just plain old blue. No fancy word for this. However, that is a fancy color. I don't, it's not your typical blue, but it is bluish. It's like a sky or blue maybe. So that's, that's your lineup right there. Flips folds. Starting price is going to be a little bit different. This one over here, closer to that $1,000 price point. The way you can config these is a bit different as well. Full spec check here. The Z Flip 4 has a 6.7 inch FHD plus display. That's dynamic AMOLED 2640 by 1080 and the aspect ratio 22 by 9. 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate. External display is 1.9 inch super AMOLED 260 by 512. It's 187 grams. The front camera 10 megapixels selfie f 2.4 rear dual camera two 12 megapixel sensors ultra wide as well as wide angle f 2.2 and f 1.8 8 gigs of ram on every storage option for the device from 128 all the way up to 512 with 256 in the middle. The dual battery setup improved here, 3,700 milliamp hours. IPX8, capable of submersion in up to 1.5 meters of fresh water for up to 30 minutes. I don't recommend that you don't have to test that or anything like that, but Z Fold 4, 7.6 inch QXGA Plus Dynamic AMOLED, Infinity Flex 2176 by 1812, 21.6 by 18, 120 hertz, adaptive refresh cover screen, 6.2 inch HD Plus, 2316 by 904, 23.1 by 9 aspect ratio, also 120 hertz adaptive refresh, 263 grams, cover camera, 10 megapixels F22, the under display camera, four megapixels F1.8. The rear triple camera setup has a 12 megapixel ultra wide F2.2, 50 megapixel wide angle camera F1.8, and a 10 megapixel telephoto with 30x space zoom. Z Fold 4 has a larger pixel size on the sensor and a 23 3% brighter sensor, according to Samsung. So the Z Fold 4 increases the RAM up to 12 gigabytes on 
all varieties from 256 all the way up to one terabyte with 512 in the middle. The dual battery setup on the Fold model, 4,400 milliamp hour dual battery. Also IPX8 with the same specs, submersion up to 1.5 meters of fresh water for 30 minutes. Furthermore, the Z Fold 4 is the first device to ship with Android 12L, which is a special version of Android, which is designed for large screen devices. This is a thing, it's not going away. Bigger mobile devices here to stay, Google says so, and definitely Samsung says so. Wireless PowerShare will loves it. Wireless PowerShare. I love it too. And of course we have wireless charging across all these devices, but not just regular old wireless charging. We also have reverse wireless charging so you can charge up your Galaxy Buds 2 Pro or whatever else you wanna reverse wireless charge. These are my props. We're gonna do some close-ups. We're gonna do some text. What do you mean, do I want those bottles? I gotta keep it fresh here. I gotta, you know, fold. We could do a portrait mode. We have a model. Quick little portrait here. It wants me to do three by default. It wants me to use the portrait lens. Bam. Ooh. Oh. Edges. Mo. You can appreciate. Mr. Aperture. You can appreciate. Okay, let's go to regular photo mode. The One X, ultra wide. Wow, my finger was actually in there. That is wide. Take it again. And Three X, definitely good for portraits. Versatility. Let's look at this. You see this little fiber on the hat? Look at that. You see that? Detail. Very wide. I'm a fan of wide. Very wide, dude. Is this six or? Very wide. And obviously we have our zoom. So, and, and then there's our standard. Oof, that is a sensitive, a sensitive set of pixels there. Look at much detail, even in the lower lit background. Will's gonna enjoy this. You're gonna enjoy this. The world's gonna enjoy this. I think the natural way to do a selfie on this model is just on the front camera here and uh, choose a color tone, natural bright. That's interesting. I'm gonna stick to natural. I'm gonna turn this off and uh, three, two, one. Oof, oof, they done did it. They done did it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing in the detail? No, they done did it, Mo. They done did it. And that's on just this front camera here. Not gonna do or perform like those ones. So, okay. How about some video? It's set to FHD 30 by default. I will go to UHD. 60, why don't I? Smoother, ultra high resolution video. Also taking up lots of space. Auto FPS video stabilization, love it. Oh my God, it is very fluid. Are you appreciating? Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm on, I'm on the wrong camera here. Oh, that explains it. So we can do, we can do UHD 60 on the front camera for video. And it was very smooth, not typical. We can do 8K 24 on the rear. This is tough to show off in these videos. So we're gonna stick to 4K 60, a UHD 60 right here. Ooh, super steady. Let's see, does it, ooh! Super steady, you require a little bit of a crop. I'm not gonna go super steady. I'm gonna manage like this. Here is a video sample on the new Z Fold 4 as I approach a wonderful specimen here and I move towards the lower lit wheel portion of the Supra. And maybe the dog approaches. Oh, hey, wait, set. With a little zoom too, you want the treat? Okay. And maybe the dog approaches. Oh, he was so skeptical of me. Nice. He's like, I'm in trouble. It's a tone thing too. I'm like, oh, just get over here. He's like, oh, that's trouble. He risked his life for the treat though. He's like, I gotta do it. Can't help it. I mean, did you hear the speakers there? Like, and when it's at max brightness, I mean, it's a bit ridiculous how good it is. How are you gonna watch uh, on any phone I this experience, Mo? 
Okay. You're they not doing it. They said thing Listen to the, the sound. As possible. Look how That's much screen you're you're dealing is, with here. This frame, especially on the OLED with the dark background. Work. I mean, there's a reason why I couldn't put this phone down last year. There's a reason why. And the reason is there's no other phone that really does what this thing does in the pocket. And they just keep refining it and pushing the industry, which is good. Start thinking about doing some different things. It's not going to be for everyone. That's fine. It's fine. But it just might be for me compels me every single time. I'm like, I could do everything on that. It's the one phone where I don't feel as much like, oh, I just want to reach for a laptop or I don't want to reach for a tablet. That's that phone. Or I'm out with my other activities in the community, connected to the community, and I still have to do some work from time to time. Flip this thing open, or in this case, unfold it. This one's the flip mode. And then I'm like in YouTube studio or something and I have so much real estate and I really don't feel nearly as confined as I do on pretty much any other smartphone. I'm gonna put my SIM card in very shortly. The flip model, I don't know if this year's the year that I give it a crack for an extended period of time, but it is the ultimate kind of activity phone, the ultimate wearable phone, the phone that's in your pocket and is not cumbersome at all. Maybe it's also the vlogging slash social media phone, tripod-like functionality and the ability to use your main cameras for pretty much everything. You're doing some stuff that other smartphones also can't do. Two different options, really for two totally different customers. For me, I think this is the device I would pick, but let me know down in the comments, would you go for the Z Fold 4 or would you go for the Z Flip 4? All right, so here's the other thing. Uh, Samsung actually brought over even more stuff, which is cool, which is good. So in an upcoming video, I'm also gonna be looking at Buds 2 Pro and also the new watches, which are here right now. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that content and also so you can figure out how all this stuff integrates with the two new flagship devices. Ooh, look at this watch face. That's, oh, whoa, check it. Cool.